NASA is finally planning to replace the ISS with SpaceX's Starship, but there is a problem. NASA's Mars Sample Return Plan is in trouble. Let's get started. As the International Space Station ISS nears the end of its operational life, scheduled for decommissioning in 2030, the entire space community is turning its attention to what comes next. The ISS, a symbol of international collaboration in space for over two decades, has been pivotal in advancing our understanding of space and human physiology and microgravity. With its retirement on the horizon, the race to develop its successor is intensifying, with SpaceX at the forefront proposing a revolutionary concept, transforming their Starship spacecraft into a new space station. SpaceX's approach diverges from traditional models, where space stations are built from scratch. Instead, they envision leveraging the existing capabilities of the Starship spacecraft. This concept isn't without historical precedent. There have been ideas about repurposing components like external fuel tanks into habitats. However, SpaceX's proposal is unique due to Starship's design and capabilities. Designed initially for interplanetary travel, Starship boasts a robust construction made from stainless steel, which is exceptionally durable, resistant to space's harsh conditions, and easy to maintain. This material choice not only makes Starship efficient for travel, but also ideal for transformation into a long-term space habitat. Starship size is one of its most compelling features for conversion into a space station. With dimensions of 50 meters in height and a diameter of 9 meters, it already exceeds the internal volume of the ISS. The upcoming Starship version 3 model, expected to be even larger at 70 meters, would further enhance this potential. Originally designed to carry up to 100 passengers for interplanetary missions, the spacecraft offers ample space for living quarters, scientific research facilities, and storage. Another significant advantage is its reusability. If adapted as a space station, Starship could return to Earth for maintenance, potentially lowering operational costs significantly compared to the ISS's maintenance, which costs NASA about $3 billion annually. Economically, the transformation of Starship into a space station could be a game-changer. While the ISS has cost an estimated $150 billion over its lifetime, Elon Musk has suggested that each starship could be produced for as little as $20 million. Even with multiple starships forming a station, the total cost could be a fraction of what was spent on the ISS. This cost effectiveness could open up space to commercial tourism, research, and even private ventures by making space more accessible. Despite these advantages, converting Starship into a space station is not without its challenges. A large portion of Starship's current design including engines and propellant tanks, would be superfluous for a station's needs, reducing usable space unless intensively modified. Suggestions have included repurposing methane storage chambers, but such alterations would require complex in-orbit construction, challenging both engineering and logistics. Moreover, Starship lacks the external infrastructure like solar panels and multiple docking ports found on traditional space stations necessary for power and resupply missions. Integrating these would demand redesigns that might compromise Starship's efficiency as a long-vehicle spacecraft. To overcome these hurdles, SpaceX would need to innovate further, potentially creating a modular system where several Starships connect to form a rotating wheel structure. This could generate artificial gravity through centrifugal force, mitigating some health issues associated with long-term microgravity exposure. NASA has been proactive in fostering this new era of space stations through initiatives like the Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities, CCSC2. They've partnered with seven companies, including SpaceX, to develop commercial space habitats. This initiative is part of a broader strategy where NASA transitions from owning and operating space stations to being a customer of privately owned and operated facilities. Apart from SpaceX, companies like Blue Origin, Northrop Grumman, and Vast Space are also in the race. Vast Space, in particular, has ambitious plans with their Haven 1 and Haven 2 projects. Haven 1, launching in 2025 via a SpaceX Falcon 9, will initially serve as a luxury space station and research platform. Haven 2, 
plan for phase launches starting in 2028 aims to be a comprehensive successor to the ISS with enhanced living and research capabilities, Vast Space's collaboration with SpaceX is crucial. They plan to use SpaceX's Falcon Heavy for Haven 2's modules and potentially Starship for the core module, leveraging SpaceX's launch capabilities and Starlink for communication. This partnership not only benefits VAST by providing access to SpaceX's technological prowess, but also aligns with SpaceX's vision of expanding human presence in space through commercial means. While the idea of Starship as a space station is still in its conceptual phase, the potential is undeniable. It represents a shift towards more sustainable, scalable, and economically viable space exploration. However, until these plans solidify into reality, Starship's primary role remains focused on exploration and transportation, particularly for missions like those under NASA's Artemis program. The future of space stations after the ISS involves not just technological innovation, but also a new economic model where private companies lead and government agencies like NASA buy services. This paradigm shift could democratize access to space, making it a realm for not just scientific discovery, but also commerce and tourism. As SpaceX and its partners continue to push these boundaries, the dream of a new generation of space stations could soon transform into reality, setting the stage for humanity's next steps in space exploration. There's an unofficial robotic space race heating up between the U.S. and China, with both nations focusing on ambitious Mars Sample Return MSR, missions to bring materials from the Red Planet back to Earth. In the U.S., NASA's Perseverance rover is hard at work in Jezero Crater, collecting Martian soil and rock samples for a future MSR mission. However, NASA's initial plans for the project faced significant challenges, including a hefty $11 billion price tag and a timeline that wouldn't see the samples returned until 2040. These issues prompted NASA leadership to push for a more efficient and cost-effective strategy. To address these concerns, NASA, in partnership with the European Space Agency, ESA, commissioned several studies, both internal and external, to explore ways to reduce costs and accelerate the timeline for returning Martian samples. Now, an independent committee is conducting another critical review of the MSR program to help chart its future. This review, led by the MSR Strategy Review Team and chaired by MIT planetary scientist Maria Zuber, is evaluating input from NASA centers, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, and private industry. The team's findings will guide NASA in finalizing the program's architecture, costs, and schedule. According to Karen Fox, a NASA spokesperson, the review team will deliver its final report to NASA's Science Mission Directorate by the end of 2024. Additional updates on the MSR program are expected in early 2025. Thanks for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another great video tomorrow.